All right, I forgot that is squared there. There's a little squared there. Always watch out for those squares. They can cause all sorts of pain and torture. So we got down to 40 times 10 to the six plus 6,000, so 64,874 squared. Add those together. Add them together plus take the square root of that and you get 210, 258. So V, let's put that back into kilonewtons now. V equivalent is 210.3 kilonewtons. All right, that's an important number. Our V star equivalent is 210.3 kilonewtons. Now, at this point, you should do a sanity check and say, all right, what was our initial load? It was 200. We add some torsion. Yes, it should go up. If you get a number there that's less than your original, you know you screwed up somewhere, okay? So that should be somewhat more than the shear force. All right, so that's a believable number, 210. Okay, now we go to, we have a V equivalent equals 210.3 kilonewtons. So that is an equivalent shear force, which takes into account of the torsion and we have to make sure that this beam can take that load and we know that v star must be greater than or equal to phi v u okay and that is over here clause 8.2.3.1 that just says our equivalent uh shear load has got to be greater than the cap capacity yep straightforward so we'll put Clause 8.2.3.1. All right, and we know that VU equals VUC plus VUS. And there is a PV, the uh, pre-stressing load, but that equals zero, okay? The shear capacity of a beam is made up of the shear capacity of the concrete, there is some inherent shear capacity in the concrete, plus the shear capacity of the steel. And by the steel, we mean the shear capacity of these rings around the outside. So we're gonna work out both of those components. So let's first go to VUC. Oops. VUC equals, and we turn the page here. So this little equation, VUC equals KV, times BV times a DV times the square root of F dash C. KV times BV times DV times the square root of F dash C and that is clause 8.2.4.1. Now, that little K, that equation is easy and it's deceptively easy because that little KV there is gonna to torture you, all right? Now, fortunately, there is a simplified method because that KV is described here and here and down to here. And it's quite complicated. It's all about strain rates in the, in the concrete. You can go through that if you want. We can use the simplified version if we comply with all the characteristics of this paragraph. So, where the square root of F dash C shall not exceed eight megapascals, i.e. you're using less than 64 megapas megapascal concrete, we are using 40 megapascal concrete. So tick to that one. Um, then our KV and the strut can be done by the simplified method. Alternatively, for non pre-stressed components, tick. Not subject to axial tension, tick. And provided the specified yield of the longitudinal reinforcement does not equal 500 MPA, we're using N bars, which are 500 MPA, tick. The design concrete strength does not exceed 65 MPA. Tick, that's really just about that. And the size of the maximum aggregate particle is not less than 10 millimeters. So you have to have at least decent sized rocks in concrete to be able to do this. Then the value of KV and the strut angle, which we'll come to, may be determined by the simplified method. Ah, hooray. Simplified method, turn the page. 
Determination of KV and that theta V for non pre stress components simplified method. The angle we'll come back to. KV may be determined as, and there's two possibilities. ASV over S, if your steel is less than the minimum steel, use that equation. If your area of your steel is greater than the minimum steel, you've got to use KV as 0.15. Okay, so now we should actually first find our minimum steel. And that is back just a couple of pages. He says, it's somewhere here. Ah, oh, here we go. Yep. Minimum shear reinforcement. What this says is, if you need to put shear reinforcement in, that's the minimum amount you need. Okay, let's step back a bit and say, the question we actually probably should have asked early on, do we need any shear reinforcement in this beam? Well, the clause here, transverse shear reinforcement shall be provided in all regions where V star, that's your load, is greater than VUC, five VUC. What that's saying is if your shear load in your beam is less than VUC, just the shear capacity of concrete, you don't even need to put any rings in at all. Now I've had, I've got a pretty heavy shear load here, so I've skipped that step because I know it's not going to comply. But if you've got a light shear load, first thing you do is check 5 VUC, and maybe you can skip this whole process altogether, you don't need any shear steel. Uh, if your torsional load is greater than a quarter of your torsion, all right, we've already checked that and we know that that's the case, so we do need, we do need shear steel in here. Or if the overall depth of your member is greater than 750 mil, you've got to put it in. All right, so where you put it in, that's how much steel you need. So we'll copy that equation. A, let's go minimum steel. All right, so we'll come back to our VUC in a minute. Our ASV minimum, which is the area of our steel, divided by S equals 0 0.08 times square root of F dash C times BV over F S Y F. All right, what do all those mean? ASV is what we're trying to find out. We'll come back to that, S. S is the spacing of these bars along the beam. Okay, so what this, if you look at that portion carefully, what it says is if you have whatever the spacing is proportional, is inversely proportional to how much steel you have. So if we get, I know we have, I've nominated the spacing, but if we doubled the spacing, we'd need twice as much steel per the ring. Or if we halve the spacing, we'd only need half as much steel per ring. That's all that says. So I've nominated 125 millimeter center to center. And you might be thinking to yourself, gee, that's pretty close, you know, only five inches apart. That's very closely spaced rings, and the answer is yes, actually they are. I'll explain why right at the end of this, okay? Um, as a general rule, there's rules about what the maximum spacing is, and it's normally something below 300 mil. There's rules about it in there, you'll find it later. All right, F dash C, square root F dash C, we already know is 40, BV. BV is the width of our beam, and so that's 300 millimeters and F S Y F it's a mouthful that is the yield strength of our shear links so for n bars that's 500 MPa um, do be careful there because sometimes for beams you use bars which are not n bars you might use drawn wire or something which has a 250 mil 250 megapascal limit all right, I'm going to stop there and pause for a second.